What is up guys? It's your girl Riva and I am back again with another video. If you're new here, my name is Riva and I'm here to give you guys my reaction to this video. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. I'm going to go ahead and press play and we're going to get right into the video. Single women who earn $75,000 to $150,000 a year. I need for you to get this. It's highly unlikely that you're going to connect with the type of man who will love, appreciate, respect, marry, and remain faithful and loyal to you in your same tax bracket or in your same, you know, uh, income bracket. Stop letting that be one of the prerequisites. Why would he have to have that much money? If you already have a comfortable lifestyle that you can afford, why not find a man who has God's heart? Why not consider the fact that God made us and help me, which means he staffs the weaknesses or the deficiencies of our men in us. When I met my husband, he had a decent job at Walmart, but when we got together, he was a $7.50 dishwasher. I made good money. I had the nice house. I had the nice car. I had the nice things. And so it wasn't difficult for us to come together and really focus on the important part, our marriage, our love relationship, our friendship, our walk with God, our vision, what God called him to do. He wanted to have a school of performing arts. I had the money, I had the resources and the connections. I made that happen without a dime from him or any financial contribution on his part. He's not less than a man. I didn't make him feel like he's less than a man. My money is our money. His money is our money. Now his income supersedes mine. But supposing I would have been one of those silly women that's saying, oh, he only makes $7.50 an hour. He's not good enough for me. He had God's heart concerning me. He was impressed with me as a woman. He saw me as the answer to his prayers. He felt like the quality of his life would be upgraded if he connected with me or someone like me. And he was right. Because now he's living the best he's ever lived. He talks about it all the time. He's never cheated on me, never beat me, never called me out of my name, never cursed at me. None of those things. He's never mistreated me. He has hurt my feelings a couple of times, but it was in the truth. It was things I don't want to hear. But, you know, we're best friends first. He loves me enough to tell me the truth because that's what's going to make me free. Stop with the fine man and the big money man and... The, the, oh, I got to feel something. There's got to be chemistry. I got to be attracted to him. Be attracted to purpose. Be attracted to a man that actually sees value in you and isn't looking for someone else, somebody who's satisfied with you. We always want the one that wants something different from us. And we wonder why it doesn't work. He's cheating on you. He's lying to you. He's disconnected. There's no sexual chemistry or he's not contributing financially. You know, you have big penis energy. And if you're the boss, men don't, they want to be leaders. God made them leaders. Not all of them are, but all of them do want to be one. They're not all qualified, but they want to be one. Choose who's choosing you and refuse who's refusing you. Just something to think about. <sighs> Good day. The, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, because she... Was this a sermon or not? Because I'm, I'm feeling a little bit like, you know, she went there. Okay, she went there. Now, there's a, a couple of things that I want to talk about um, in regards to this conversation. But I, I got to be real with y'all. She she just, you know, elbowed and kept moving. Okay, she stiff on people and just kept the pushing. Like, take it or don't take it. You know what I'm saying? And one thing I want to say is that I don't want this to be misconstrued. Nobody is telling you to go find somebody to support. Okay? Nobody is telling you that you must, because um, you make a certain amount of money, you must find somebody who is making less than you, and that's the only way that somebody will love you. If we want to have the full entire conversation, that's not true. It could be a lot of different things, right? It, some people who make a lot of, some doctors marry doctors. Some lawyers marry lawyers. Like, these are things that are possible. But at the end of the day, when you're single, okay, and the only thing that you do have is your puppy and your money, and you're talking about that you're only going to be with a certain standard of, per, of person or only a man that makes a certain amount of money and that same exact man that is around you all the time, whether it's in business meetings, whether it is in the office or whatever it is that you're always coming in contact with these same people that have the same wealth as you or more than you and they are not pursuing you, you might need to explore some different options. Okay? But I, she said so many things that I want to just keep going into the video and then breaking them down as we go. 
single women who earn seventy five to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. I need for you to get this. It's highly unlikely that you're going to connect with the type of man who will love, appreciate, respect, marry, and remain faithful and loyal to you in your same tax bracket or in your same, you know, uh, income bracket. Stop letting that be one of the prerequisites. Why would he have to have that much money? If you already have a comfortable lifestyle that you can afford, why not find a man who has God's heart? Why not consider the fact that God made us and help me, which means he staffs the weaknesses or the deficiencies of our men in us. When I, I love this because what she's basically saying is instead of you just focusing on, um, you know, financial gain, instead of you just focusing on things that, you know, can just bring you wealth or instead of you just focusing on the fact that, you know, um, you need this, this man to have this amount of money in his bank account, like you should be also looking at other qualities. You should also be looking at greater things. You should also be focused on, um, you know, this person's character, their principles, their structure, their mindset, right? Like, that is what you should be focused on. I'm sorry I keep looking out the window, guys, but I see this man picking some mangoes, okay? Um, if y'all didn't know, I'm in Jamaica, and I see this man picking some mangoes off the tree, and I'm hoping that he doesn't pick them all. Anyway, um, so you have to be focused on the, the quality that's going to make your man a great husband, a great father, a great leader, and not just only what's in his bank account. And I want to be clear. I think there's a, there's a portion of women who get this already, right? There's some, some women who have wealth. They have the house. They have the car. They have uh, the great credit. They have everything. And they, they understand the value of a man. And so they don't look at him and only feel like they only need to obtain, um, you know, they, they need to obtain so much wealth or whatever it is. They understand that I, I need a man in my home for protection, for guidance. You know, I need that masculine energy in my life. It makes me think clearly. It makes me focus. It makes my vision, you know, expand. It makes my blessings overflow. You know, when the two get together and have a, a, you know, a great relationship, a great connection, there's literally nothing that you cannot accomplish with the masculine energy and the feminine energy coinciding with one another. But um, let's continue. My husband, he had a decent job at Walmart, but when we got together, he was a $7.50 dishwasher. I made good money. I had the nice house. I had the nice car. I had the nice things. And so it wasn't difficult for us to come together and really focus on the important part, our marriage, our love relationship, our friendship, our walk with God, our vision, what God called him to do. He wanted to have a school of performing arts. I had the money, I had the resources and the connections. I made that happen without a dime from him or any financial contribution on his part. He's not less than a man. I didn't make him feel like he's less than a man. My money is our money. His money is our money. Now his income supersedes mine. But so this is the only part, right? I understand the point that she's trying to make because some people need to hear the entire story, right? Like some women need to hear the entire background um, of the situation to realize that it's okay to support your man and not think anything of it, not look at him any different because he needed your assistance. Nothing wrong with that. The only thing is that I, I feel like this part of the, and this is my only, my opinion, this part of the conversation she could have just skipped over and just kept making the example. Just because maybe you're not going to make your man feel less of a man because, you know, you helped him out and you started your business. And I'm, I'm sure she doesn't even care about what other people think. But this can this is almost like a form of like, um, a slight form of like emasculation when it comes to your man. Because to other men, you know, men are very hard on themselves. They have to create their own wealth. You know, they have to be on their purpose, get in the back before they even choose a woman. And the fact that you're saying that, like, you you started his business for him and he didn't con contribute to the business at all, even though now he makes more money than she does now, it's just the point of that, that part of the story. There's nothing wrong with being real, but something should be kept between a couple, right? Because maybe he don't want everybody to know all of that. Maybe he doesn't care. I don't know. But I'm just saying, I think something should be kept a little bit more private in, the, in regards to finances. And also, I want to say just to be balanced in the conversation, some women use this exact thing as a form of control as well. So you have to know the type of person that you're with because some people will use the fact that you don't have as much money as them as means to control you. Oh, you don't have to go get a job. You don't have to do this. 
You don't have to work. You don't have to do this. I can have all the money, but it's because of fear that if you go into the workforce, maybe you'll find somebody that's more attractive. Maybe you'll find somebody that's more suited. And so if they can keep you in the house and provide this comfortable lifestyle for you, hopefully that will make you want to stay with them even more. So I think it's also important to find out um, the type of person that you're dealing with, the type of woman that you're in a relationship with, to make sure that it's not from control, it's not from this, it's just a woman that's kind of supporting you and supporting your vision. I think that that's an extremely important um, factor of the entire conversation, though, is because, again, people can use these things as manipulation tactics. Tabitha Brown has a great story, you know, um, her man, her husband was supportive of her in her acting career, you know, he had to work like, you know, crazy hours, crazy long hours to, to be able to support her and to support the family while she was going on auditions and acting gigs and stuff like that. And, you know, as soon as her career has taken off, she let her husband know like, hey, I know that this is not what you wanted to do. You have a passion outside of the job, but you were working this job to be able to support us and to support your family. And so she now is making, you know, a certain amount of money where she can say, let's focus on your passion. Let's focus on what you want to do. Let's focus on what it is that you are, um, what's going to make you happy instead of just focusing on, you know, the amount of money or whatever it is. And now he is able to do and pursue his passion instead of having to go into work a job um, because he no longer has to carry the weight because she's able to assist him. And now the roles have reversed when it comes to who's the breadwinner, but it's benefiting the entire unit. And I think that that's what it's about, like having a relationship. It's not just about, oh, you know, my man has to be a provider and, you know, he got to do this and he got to pay all the bills and I could just, you know, buy groceries and that should be enough. Because at the end of the day, your man, say for instance, your man does make a whole bunch of money. What if he gets sick and he needs you to his support? Does that mean that you, you're going to leave him because you choose that you are not going to support, support your man? Or are you going to be able to be that helper? right? Assistant <laughs> and assist your man in the needs that he's requiring at that time. That is what we really have to ask ourselves. That's, that's what's extremely vital to find out. But I want to know what you guys think about this in the comment section down below. I love the video. I love the video. I love everything that she had to say. Of course, let me know what you guys think about this again in the comment section down below. Hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. And I, of course, will see you guys in the next video. Love you. To all of my mango lovers out there, I know that this is not a part of the video, but to all my mango lovers out there who I told y'all I saw this man picking the mangoes off the tree, I just want to let you know this is why I love Jamaica, okay? This is why, because I saw him picking them. When I finished this video, I knocked on the window, I asked him to please save me some, and he gave me three of the best mangoes. If you love mangoes, you will understand the bliss that I have, but I just wanted to say this is why I love Jamaica, okay? Because if you do this in the States, if you see somebody picking something in the States and you ask them for something, they'll be like, I can't hear you. Next thing you know, they run, hop over the fence, and they're gone. But the fact that he literally not only waited for me but gave me the best three is just bliss. But anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one.